It is, it's me, it's TRG, the Ramblin' Gambler, a vest wearing, ring baron, son of a salesman. This is the 37th episode of our Casino Combat Podcast. The big book of numerology says that the number 37 is a do-it-yourself kind of number. It's a highly independent and creative number. Well, this is definitely a do-it-yourself podcast. I will try to give you a highly independent and creative episode. Let's keep the lawyers happy, and then we will get started. Non-binary persons, ladies, all the ships at sea, gentlemen, do not gamble with money you cannot afford to lose. Do not gamble with money you need to pay your bills. My past performances are not indicative of anyone's future results, including my own. If you have a gambling problem, contact your local problem gambling hotline number. If you do not know your local problem gambling hotline number, send an email to help at casinocombat.com. We will find that number for you. We will make it available to you. Everything I'm going to share with you in this podcast is based in fact. Names and dates have been altered to protect the innocent and and the guilty. Minor items unrelated to outcomes may be omitted in the interest of brevity and clarity. All right. Boy, remember when that was challenging? <laughs> it seems like forever ago. But that was really tough at the beginning, folks. Uh, so let's giddy up, Buttercup. My youngest son, the young squire, has been talking with me lately about mindset as it relates to sales and marketing. Two things he's very interested in. An otherwise minor event in my travels this past week really has me thinking about mindset in gambling, and since I have a casino wisdom that addresses that, I thought I would creatively revisit that casino wisdom for our episode this week. I rambled through a couple of casinos this week, and I'll share the results of that trip with you in a travel segment. I've mentioned in the past that growing up, I read dozens of books about heroes and crooks and learned much from both of their styles. Well, in the VIP lounge today, I'm going to share with you the story of the time I got kicked out of the VIP lounge where I was a regular guest. The same VIP lounge that had no issues with Gabriel throwing a glass across the room managed to find some things I did so egregious that they had to ask me to leave. After you've heard the story, you can decide if I was the hero or the crook in the story. Over the past 36 episodes, we've developed a fairly long list of podcast basics. I always want first-time listeners to be informed, so let me run down the list of podcast things everyone needs to know as quickly as possible. One, I wrote a short book about how to play, how I play, not how to play, how I play uh, slot machines. It's free. I'm happy to send you a copy. If you want one, send an email to me via trg at casinocombat.com. Spell combat with a K and put the words slot tactics in the subject line. A bot will send you a link to download the book. Free of charge, I promise. Two, there are games hidden in the podcast. There have been winners with prizes. There are still prizes available to be awarded. The details are in episode 22. Three, Guardian and the Jet have not checked in yet. Four, Casino Combat has a YouTube channel and there is a playlist called Boot Camp that teaches all of the core concepts in about 90 minutes. Five, Casino Combat is also on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. The links are on the CasinoCombat.com website. Oh, did I mention Combat is spelled with a K? (laughs) There you go, pretty quick. Now even our new friends know what's going on, and we can get started, and we are going to do a moment of Casino Wisdom. So way back in episode 11, we talked about Casino Wisdom number 33. You need to want the win more than you want the action. Casino Wisdoms combine knowledge about or experiences with casinos with an action to take when in and around casinos. And some of those actions can be really easy. I mean, Casino Wisdom 74, if there's an app, get the app. The action there is really, really simple, right? Find out if there's an app and if there is, install the app. The action here is much more difficult. The action here is controlling what you want, controlling your emotions. It's about emotions. It's about your mindset, as the young squire would express things. So let me share with you why this is on my mind. I mean, other than talking to my son, that's part of it. Um, I know I'm getting a bit ahead of the format, but this is on my mind because of a tiny little minuscule event from my travels this past week. You see, as much as I hope the various casino wisdoms will help listeners be better at casino gambling, I created them as shortcuts for myself, my wife, and Gabriel to remind us what we have already learned and the best choices in those situations. So here's how I found myself needing to remember casino wisdom number 33. One of my stops this week was at Casino One, the casino where I started this podcast journey with all of you. The casino that forms a useful cluster with my home casino, Casino Two. 
One of the things I enjoy about my morning stops there on my way back from Casino 2 is that I usually receive a coupon to comp myself a drink along with whatever other goodies they are giving away. So I usually get my free cocktail and find a slot machine to play while I sip my drink and relax from the drive. So I get my drink, I go over to Wonder Woman Wild, a slot machine I, I usually have great success with, I put in my card to track my points, I put in some money to get the thing started, I make the first spin, I pick up my drink, and just as I do that, the entire screen fills up with all the same symbols. Uh, I think her, her bracelets and her tiara, something like that. Um, so the machine starts going ching, 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 ching. And I just reach my positive exit point for my slot strategy. Just like that. One spin. No points. I was honestly a bit conflicted. I wanted to play. I wanted to get points. I wanted to sip my drink and enjoy my morning. I actually considered for just a moment or two setting a newer, larger number as an accent point rather than uh, getting up from the machine and doing what I knew I should do. I almost made a decision about gambling without stepping away from the gambling space for a minute, something I've talked about many times. And I realized in that moment I was wanting the action, the activity of gambling, more than I wanted the financial win that my own strategy had created. And that's understandable. My slot strategy uses a very small positive exit point. That's intentional. I'm fine with playing a machine for 15 or 20 minutes and capturing a small profit and adding up those small profits across multiple machines. But this was less than 30 seconds. And I needed Casino Wisdom number 33 to remind me to get up and walk away, to want that small win as much as I want a large win. I needed to have the winning mindset, not the gambling is fun mindset. So I did. Through the benefits of Casino Wisdom 33, I took my drink to a very nice fountain in the lobby, and I enjoyed the fountain and the free cocktail while I was entering my results and my comps and my gifts into my phone to get some of the record keeping out of the way. I did some people watching since I was in the lobby of the casino, and when I finished my drink, I went to find a blackjack table to continue my trip. And you know what? With the benefits of separating myself from the casino just a little bit by stepping aside from the machine, from the ability to gamble for just a few minutes, that win started feeling more important. By the time I eventually left the casino, that small win felt even more important for reasons I'll share with you in a few minutes. If you've not already, I encourage you to develop a mindset of wanting the win, a win at the game of casino gambling, more than you want to continue gambling at any one moment of time. Doing casino combat, as I've said many times, isn't about winning the table or the slot machine. It's about winning the month and winning your total relationship with casinos. That means adding up the big wins and the small wins at the end of the month. And losing money that our strategies already won for us makes that a lot more difficult than it needs to be. Okay, I'm not sure if that's independent or creative or not, but maybe it was. Um, let's do the travel segment next, and I'll share the results uh, for the rest of my trip with you and let you know what happened last week. I think I mentioned last episode that my weekend was going to be occupied with family time celebrating my oldest son's birthday and hanging out with the young lion. So I basically executed what I'd almost call plan A at this point in my life, right? I scheduled a customer appointment for Thursday morning, and this customer is roughly halfway to my home casino, Casino 2. So once I finish with them, I headed to, you know, I head over to a comp room at the hotel, and I've got some, some gambling time that fits well into the rest of my schedule. This casino, as I've mentioned, is part of the My Choice reward system. And in the lobby of the hotel, they have a picture of all the casinos that are part of My Choice. So I took a picture of that, and the guys posted it on social media. And as I took the picture, I was thinking about the various vacation clubs that you can join that have hotels all over the world. I'm sure you've heard of them, probably. You pay a fee to Disney or Hyatt or Marriott or a whole bunch of other companies I probably don't even know the names of. But you pay a fee to be a member, and then you can stay under terms and conditions. And as I said, I've never been a member, but you can stay at all these various locations that they have around the world. So even if you don't go to Disney, if you go to Boston, you can still have a Disney quality stay. Ever said, as I said, never been a member, but I understand the attraction. You like the levels of quality and service a certain brand provides, and you know that you will get that as a member. But at this point, with what I've done over the course of this podcast, 
I now have the combined My Choice and Caesars maps as my vacation club. Yes, the first time I show up somewhere, they might ask me to pay a discounted rate to spend the night. But at the end of my stay, a host may reverse that and take all the charges away. And if not, I'll pay less and get more than if I just booked a room at a nice casino. And my imaginary money that they give me, both Caesars and my choice for gambling, I can spend that imaginary money at any of those dots on the map. And it spends the same. All those places. And the best part is that most months, they pay us to be a member of this club. <laughs> those dots are kind of a little bit more than dots now, aren't they? Anyway, enough TRG. How did things go? Enough about the dots in the rooms in the club. Um, as I said, they comp the room. They had both a table match bet for me and some free slot play. Um, if you've been listening, I've been on a bit of a cold streak, probably the longest one since I started doing the podcast. I said last episode that I needed a new beginning because every new beginning comes from some other beginning's end. And I really needed that previous beginning to be over. I needed to put that away for a little bit. Uh, the first blackjack table was more of the previous beginning. More losing. Uh, I got a nice long run. Took a long time to reach a negative exit. So lots of points, but eventually I took a small loss. And the first slot machine with real money was a loser as well. And this was especially annoying since I had scouted a new machine, a new type of machine, and it looked like it should fit perfectly with the way I play slots, and just, boom, negative exit point almost immediately. So I got some food, found another blackjack table, and that was my new beginning, finally. That next table provided another nice long stretch of time, nice long group of points, and gave me a small profit for the evening on the blackjack side of things. And the next slot machine created a slot machine profit for the evening. I had one more long session, but only a few additional dollars profit to my bankroll before wrapping things up. It's interesting how differently things can go. The last two times I've been at my home casino on a solo trip, I've ended up in the hotel room early, really, really early, having accomplished quickly what I thought I was there to accomplish. This time, I reached a similar level of success, but it took a lot longer, which is good, because longer means more points. The next morning, I made my way to Casino One, and I've mentioned in the past that the nice thing about this is going home by way of Casino One adds about 30 minutes to the drive home. So I can do it in two hours, or I can do it in two and a half hours. I shouldn't say that. I can do it in three hours, or I can do it in two and a half. So if I'm willing to do it in three hours then I can stop and get whatever extra goodies exist at Casino One. And that makes it worthwhile to do both. Um, and we already talked about the first slot machine I played and my comp to drink. I had another long run at a blackjack table. A, a run where I reached a positive exit point and started protecting my win, started being really careful with it, only to play for more than another hour. Three, four, I don't know, five more shoes and doubled the size of that win that I was protecting before I finally lost a few hands in a row and decided that it was time to leave. On my way out, as I was walking to the cage, I stopped at one more slot machine and had a longer session that also resulted in a win. I told you earlier that eventually I came to value that one spin small win even more by the time I left. That's because as I entered the data and things got all totaled up, I realized that win, combined with the larger slot win that I was just walking away from, that's because as I entered the data, I realized the two wins combined, the large one and then the smaller one earlier that I was almost willing to, to spin back in, gave me a tiny win for the whole month. It put me on the positive side. And it was that little tiny win that I was almost not really, really willing to walk away from that put me over the edge. It was part of that new beginning I was looking for, and I just had to be wise enough to follow my own teachings. So three winning slot machines and two losing slot machines for the trip, and a small slot profit for the trip, and for the month to date at this point from this trip, and a solid blackjack profit of three days pay. So Team TRG is in solid shape heading into the end of the month. We are still sorting out exactly what this week's gambling is going to look like, I think there's a good chance I'll take a solo trip somewhere. I'm not sure if that'll be a day trip or an overnight trip. I'm hoping to catch up with Gabriel in person on Friday. And Mrs. TRG and I will probably take a couple's trip to either Casino One or our home casino on Saturday night. So the normal rambling and gambling to finish the month, I guess. I'll have the full month's results next episode. Somewhat unrelated, but related. 
as we finish up this this travel segment. As longtime listeners know, my gambling locally has greatly declined along with my comps and gifts. I was stunned this week to get a package of offers in the mail for the month of March that included gifts on one day and gift cards on another, all the stuff I used to get. So next month, I will probably start picking up those gifts again if my schedule allows. And I'll confess, I'm wondering if this is the algorithm just trying to get me to come back more often or the casino changing up the process for everyone and I just happen to be seeing it as being about me. I'm not really sure, but I suspect we'll figure it out in time. Let's move into the VIP lounge, and I'll tell you how I managed to get kicked out of a VIP lounge a few years ago. Oh, a little bit of the bubbly. Come on in. I'm sure you probably know how this works by now, but just in case. Particularly pre-pandemic, one of my favorite casino activities was sitting in a VIP lounge, having some drinks or some food, and meeting friends old and new to share stories. So each episode, I enjoy doing that with you as a little theater of the mind. So since we're going to talk today about the time I was told to leave my local VIP lounge, that's where we are virtually today. Let me tell you a little bit about it. It's a fairly large space. One entire wall is covered in chrome rings interconnected with the other chrome rings. There's a large bar on one end. I'm going to say it seats over 20, maybe closer to 30. Um, And above the bar, there are black and white pictures of the Rat Pack and and other uh, celebrities of that time period. We have all the best virtual bottles in our lounge, and in real life, we had not only the best bottles, but some of the best bartenders I've ever met. There are various high-top tables in one section of the lounge. There are plenty of big TVs to watch sports on, lots of seating groups, large groups, small groups, couches, chairs, all in various combinations, and somewhat unique to this VIP lounge and important to our story, a set of four blackjack tables and a roulette table at the end of the lounge opposite the bar. Now, as always, here in our virtual VIP room, we have our normal sparkling water, but someone screwed up and we only have tap water instead of our normal top shelf still water. As always, we have handcrafted pop and local artisanal sodas, and of course, all your favorite virtual beers and wines. We had a family brunch yesterday with some excellent mimosas, so that's going to be my pour for the VIP lounge today. I'll get to my main story in a minute, but let me do one thing first. No, I'm not going to tell you that I'll be happy to buy you a drink in real life. I would be. You know that. I've told you. You know how to do that. Feel free to hit me up if you'd like to take advantage of me and take advantage of my offer. What I wanted to share is that I received a bunch of requests for the Slot Tactics book this week, which is great. Those are always fun to see in my inbox, and most of them are exactly what I've asked you to do, an email with two words in the subject line, right? Slot Tactics. But one listener took the time to include a note saying that the podcast is great, that they have almost caught up with all the episodes and would like a copy of the book. And I really appreciated the compliment. The actual written compliment, but also the bigger compliment. The bigger compliment of taking time to listen to 30 plus episodes of back content after finding the podcast. I'm really glad my rather absurd idea has that kind of value to you as listeners. I I really, that's what I intended to do, and and it means a lot to me to hear that feedback. Anyway, this is a story that I think needs the beginning to set the stage for the ending. I told you this VIP lounge has table games, and that's somewhat unusual in my experience. Usually VIP lounges are where you get away from gambling for a while. In fact, it's so unusual to have table games in a VIP lounge that when they were first installed, a variety of guests complained to management that they didn't belong in a VIP lounge. And I understand that point. It's a valid one. One, actually, I mostly agree with. But the crazy thing is, when those blackjack tables were open, they were the best value tables in the building. They had the best rules for the lowest price as a combination. You could get less expensive tables for less, uh, uh, how should I say that? You could get worse rules for less money, but these were great rules for $25 a hand. You had a six-deck game with no mid-shoe entry, a three-to-two payout on blackjack, and the dealer hitting on all soft 17s, almost the best rules in the building. You could get slightly better rules if you went into their high-limit room and you were willing to go $100 a hand, then in that case, the dealer would stand on all 17s. But for the price, it was a very good game. Add in that you had to be tier 3 or tier 4 in the reward system to even get in the door, and you had a very attractive place to play blackjack. 
These tables were not open all the time. You weren't going to walk in on a Tuesday morning at 9.30 and find those tables open. Mostly they were open for big town, big downtown events and on the weekends. But on Friday afternoons, Friday afternoon, folks, they opened the VIP lounge early at 2 o'clock instead of waiting till 4. And usually shortly after that, 20, 30 minutes later, those blackjack tables would open. And on many, many, many Fridays, some portion of the crew, myself, the walking Wikipedia, Gabriel, Trucker Mike, etc., etc., would roll in around 2 o'clock to have a drink as things opened up before moving back to the tables to gamble. And often from the time things opened until you know, 5 o'clock, our crew would have the place mostly all to ourselves. We knew all the dealers, we knew all the floor people, we knew the bartenders well, strong drinks were delivered on a steady basis with people that knew us and knew how we liked to play. It was just a wonderful place to play cards and hang out with friends. So one day, and I confess my memory's a little fuzzy on this one, I think I was with Gabriel. But it could have been the walking Wikipedia, but for the purposes of the story, I'm going to assume it was Gabriel, and one of them can correct me if I'm wrong, and they certainly will, and that's fine too. So anyway, it's me and Gabriel at our normal first and third base seats, and the rest of the table is an older woman and a younger man that we don't know. And the younger man was uh, a pretty constant string of, shall we say, colorful language? I'll leave it at that. I try to keep the podcast suitable for work. You may have to vary from that just a little bit as we tell the story, but I'll try to keep that to a minimum. So anyway, every few hands, whether winning or losing, it's a string of five or six words that are just not suitable for work. And he kept apologizing to the woman we were playing with, saying he didn't have Tourette's syndrome, but he knew that sometimes it seemed like that when he was drinking and gambling. Well, the wonderful woman didn't take offense. She repeatedly told him it was all right, it didn't bother her, she didn't mind. She was even so gracious that after three or four times of him apologizing she said well blah 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 insert colorful language there this is just the Tourette's table today I guess and with that we all overused colorful language on purpose for the next hour or so as we gambled Gabriel left eventually and I reached a stopping point shortly after that and the table kind of broke up Mrs. TRG had sent me a text that she had plans with friends after work, so when I ran into the world's kindest man and I had a win in my pocket, I was happy when he offered to buy me a drink to just kind of hang out. And that turned into me buying a second round of drinks for us. I mean, for the two of us, it was the second round, not for me. And at this point, I just accepted that it was going to be an Uber night, and I just went with it. So the world's kindest man and I played together for a while, but he decided to go play in high limit, and we parted ways. And it's a little later now, and the room is more crowded, and the staff has changed, and William the Aviator is the floor boss. And William had a well-deserved reputation for being way too strict about everything, not just stuff that mattered, hands played, or things like that. He was just... He was a real uh, by-the-book, rules-are-rules-and-we're-not-making-any-exceptions kind of guy. Now, keep in mind that in this exact same blackjack pit, Gabriel threw a glass across the room out of anger about a result on a hand, and since it didn't break or hurt anyone, no one cared. This is the same exact blackjack pit that just hosted a massive four-person swear fest just a few hours earlier. Now, I'm playing alone, really just sitting by myself, not bothering anyone, and winning and winning and winning and winning, shoe after shoe after shoe after shoe. And as the cards are being shuffled to start a new shoe, a gentleman joins me and says, I've got this free bet coupon for $100. What do you think about people playing just one hand and leaving the table? And I know I said I'd keep it suitable for work, and I confess, at some workplaces, the next few sentences might not be suitable, but you needed to understand how... Things changed in a few hours, I think. So he asked me what I thought about people playing just one hand and leaving. And so I gave him my honest opinion as an answer to his question. And I said, honestly, I think it's a dick move. But please enjoy your table and I'll wait. No problem. And I pulled my bet back from the circle and folded my hands. And my intent was to let him play his one hand and then wait while the casino shuffled the six decks again since the rule said I couldn't play if I didn't play the first hand. I wasn't going to object to him playing. I didn't care, but I wasn't going to play with him. One-hand players are almost always clowns. They just always make a mess almost of everything. I guess nothing's always. Um, I'll expand on that in a minute, I guess. I'll add that on. Um, 
But to continue the story, I used to coach youth sports. And the biggest thing I learned from referees was, was that as long as someone didn't start something with URA, they generally wouldn't eject you from the game. So, for example, a coach could say, that was a stupid call, which was fine. But saying, you're a stupid idiot, to the official, could get you ejected. So, especially after the swear fest earlier in the day, I was stunned when William the Aviator walked across the pit and told the dealer to color me up I was leaving the VIP lounge. And I protested, thinking certainly I had been misheard. I said, William... He asked me a direct question, and I answered it. I didn't start the conversation. I didn't say he was a dick. I said I thought it was a dick move, but he should go ahead and play. William was not hearing any of my appeals. He very directly told me I needed to leave the VIP lounge. Look, I'd won plenty of money. I'd had plenty of drinks. I've seen a bunch of my friends. I knew I wasn't going to get anywhere with William using reason and logic, so I took my chips and started for the door. As I was setting up my Uber, walking toward the door, I saw that a downtown event had just let out and a surge in rates was in effect. So I figured, I'm Ubering anyway, why not have a beer and wait 30 minutes and save a few bucks? Plus, I needed to settle my bar tab anyway. So I sit down at the bar, I order a beer, I, I tell the bartender, um, um, probably Eric the Banker at the time, um, that uh, I needed to settle my tab. And as I'm sipping my beer, there's a tap on my shoulders. And it's William who says, I told you to leave the lounge. Don't make me kick you out of the entire building. Again, I'm just stunned. I thought having me leave the table for answering a question was ridiculous. But the idea that he wasn't even going to allow me to have a beer and settle my tab was just dumb. Or dumb in my opinion, perhaps is a better way to express that. As I said at the start of the episode, heroes and crooks. You decide which I was in this story. To finish up, I wasn't actually planning this, but I mentioned it. So, since the entire playing just one hand thing is part of the story, let me share a strongly held point of view. I understand someone getting a big free bet offer and wanting a 50-50 chance of winning that bet. And they don't want to really do any other gambling. I, I get that. I completely do. I'm occasionally in that situation myself. But I think it is rude to come into a game in progress, even a new shoe with no mid-shoe entry, and play one hand and leave. Particularly in the case of someone playing alone with a big stack of chips in front of them at a blackjack table. Because here's the thing. This same room, five steps away, had a roulette table in it. There are any number of bets, even odd, red, black, first half, last half, that have the same odds as a hand of blackjack. And that would eliminate the risk of needing to split or double, which exists at Blackjack. There are plenty of Baccarat tables in the building, and both of those bets are basically 50-50. And the rules at that casino are, if there's not an open seat, you can just add your money on top of someone else's money who's always playing. So there's plenty of opportunities to make 50-50 bets that don't impact any other guests. They just impact the player and their winnings or losing. No one else's results or evening are going to be changed. So while I always recommend playing your free bets, even if it means walking across the street or stopping at an extra exit rather than passing them by, I also recommend roulette as the way to play those since it's quick and easy and bothers no one. Doing it at a blackjack table where people are playing is rude. And if you ask me, I'm probably going to tell you that pretty directly. If you ask my opinion, you're going to get it. If you don't ask my opinion, I'm going to keep my mouth shut and get out of the game until you're done. Because as I said, people who play single hands are usually clowns. They get afraid to take a card they should take. They don't want to put their own money or don't have their own money to put in to split or double. They do dumb things and then other players who are better than them get hurt. I've often said there's a reason players like LeBron James don't play um, basketball with amateurs because amateurs do dumb things that hurt professionals that professionals are not expecting them to do. And that's the way I feel, particularly about people coming in to play one hand in the middle. I'm perfectly happy to step back and let them play till their game is over, but I'm also perfectly willing to give them my opinion and in this case, get kicked out of the VIP lounge for doing so if they ask me what I think. So, 
There you go. A little extra content that I hadn't planned on this week. If you're playing the casino chip game, there are 10 in this creative and independent episode of the podcast. Please tip your waitresses, tip your bartenders, tip your dealers. Don't tip away your wins. If you want to tip your casino coach, you can go to anchor.fm slash casino combat and click on the donate link. I have spoken. Everything you heard here is true from a certain point of view. It's time for leaving, and I hope you understand I was born a rambling man. If you have questions, send them to questions at CasinoCombat.com. If you have techniques to share, send them to what I do at CasinoCombat.com. Don't forget, we spell combat with a K. Love it, hate it, it don't matter. Please share with your family and friends. Goodbye, everyone.